Welcome to Elevate HR's Elevate AD webinar for Azure Active Directory integration with Dynamics 365. I'm here representing Elevate HR, the world's preeminent dedicated provider of identity access management and human capital management products and services in the global Microsoft Dynamics 365 market. We're the original developers of Microsoft's Dynamics AX human resources and questionnaire modules, and we've continued from there to expand our product line and offer unparalleled security and HR implementations. We've achieved the two highest standards of partner recognition from Microsoft, Gold Certified Partner for our consulting team, and CFMD, or Certified for Microsoft Dynamics, 365, and AX for our software. You can find us all on AppSource. And it's our software that we're here to talk about today, specifically Active Directory integration. Let's start with the 30-second basics before we jump to the demo. What is Active Directory? Active Directory is, well, a directory service that Microsoft developed for Windows domain networks. Think of it as a database that tracks and stores all of your organization's user accounts and passwords in a single protected location. AD controls system security for your whole organization, and this is what gives you that single sign-on experience for all of your apps and systems like Office 365 for email, any intranet sites, and your full suite of Dynamics 365 applications. Today, you're tracking all of your contacts and vendors and customers and hopefully your employees through your ERP system, Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations, or AX 2012. And let me guess, today, managing AD is a manual process. When you hire new people or onboard new vendors, you need to grant them appropriate access to your network, your computer systems, and your communications resources. And then if a contract ends or you terminate someone, you need to make sure that all access is disabled. Plus, you need your data to stay in sync in between and up to date throughout all of your systems. Microsoft's Active Directory manages that access, and Elevate HR automates the process. So here's the three primary activities that I just described. First, we create a record. So when you onboard someone new, again, whether that's a customer, a vendor, a worker, an applicant, whoever, you perform that action in your ERP, and then maybe separately, you create that new AD account. But with Elevate AD, we automatically create that account for you. Policies ensure we create the right records at the right time in the right OUs or folders. And then time and date-based parameters enable that account on your terms. Plus, we automatically apply AD security groups and D365 or AX security rules by parameter. And then we also synchronize profiles, that's number two here, via a bi-directional feed so that updates in one place flow through all systems. Then if you transfer someone, their manager is automatically up to date in Active Directory. That means all downstream systems like Office 365 and Skype, so your org charts are up to date. And then we also automatically update their security access so it's adjusted for their new role. And then of course, number three, when it's that time, we can deactivate AD users by parameter, which is critically important for SOX compliance. And we do integrate with both on-premise and Azure Active Directory. And what we're going to look at today is a hybrid scenario because that's, that's most common. So we're going to start off in Azure Active Directory. We have this synchronizing to our on-prem domain through Azure AD Connect. And I can come in here. I can search for uh, any employee. They're going to pop up as my, uh, my central node here. I'll be able to click through and open up their AD record through Azure AD. And now what we're going to do, we're going to actually jump to our equivalent AD, our on-prem domain, which is going to open up right down here. And we're going to take a look at our test one OU. This is going to be the folder where we're tracking employees that we're looking at for today's integration. Now, take a look. I can find Adam's record right in here, open this up and see any information that I need to about him. I can also take a look at anybody else that maybe meets the same profile as Adam in here and take a close look because we're going to be hiring a new employee today. We're hiring Bruce Chatwin. We don't see his AD user account here just yet, but we will once we finish the hiring process and synchronize everything to Active Directory. So now that we've seen AD, let's jump into Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. This is my dashboard. The first thing that I see when I sign into Dynamics in the morning um, I'm going to focus most specifically here on my Active Directory integration workspace. But the first thing that catches my eye here is this pending hire wizards icon. It tells me we have four people about to be hired. So let's jump in here and check that out. 
Now, I want to emphasize that usually this is an activity that's taken on by your HR team. We're going to do it right now so we can see the hiring process finish. So we've got Bruce Chatwin. He's sitting here in this hire wizard. This basically represents the step-by-step -step process that your HR team will walk through to hire him. But we see this has already been approved. We're ready to go. I'm just going to come in here and click Finish Wizard, and you'll see that Bruce Chatwin's record disappears. He's now an active employee here in Dynamics 365. If I take us back to our Active Directory Integration Workspace, I'm going to show you how we start to set this up and schedule out the synchronizations. I've got a whole series of jobs that are running in here. You can see I can scroll for ages or filter up here to see um, the synchronizations that I've been running today. But everything all rolls up into this concept of an integration policy. So that's where we're going to start. This is where we decide what happens during the synchronization process. What policy type am I using? So in this case, we have uh, workers, applicants, customer contacts, vendor contacts, uh, extended employees, pending hires. If we want to uh, handle a future dated employee, we can do that here as well. In this case, we're hiring an, a worker record. I can come in here and determine what am I doing with these accounts? Am I enabling them? Am I maybe just creating them? And we'll enable the account when someone shows up for their first day of work. The determination scenario, we can disable accounts. And again, we're going to determine what that Active Directory architecture is. Now, this is a hybrid scenario, so we're going to sync to an on-prem AD first, let that connect up through to Azure. A couple other items I can do here, direct this to the right path, that's the OU or the folder in Active Directory. Determine what legal entity we want to create the user in in Dynamics 365. We can write all kinds of credentials and formulas for determining the username, our sync groups. And then this mapping ID here is really cool. If I open this up, this is how we determine what data goes where. And we get to say, OK, what property do we want in D365? What property are we interested in Active Directory? And which direction does this map work? And we can map just about any string field we have in Dynamics or in Active Directory. And if you are curious about some of those non-string fields, things like an email account, we've got you covered too. So anything that's a bit more complex than a string field, we already have set up. And we provide you with a series of out-of-the-box properties that you can begin to work with. And you can always add your own as you work through the process. We also have this neat date effective filter that lets me look for people days, weeks, months, you name it in advance, either by a uh, particular date offset or by a range. We have these policy flags in here as well. These are basically your account options. So I can come in here and determine if I'd like to apply any AD account flags, um, enable or disable them as we begin to work through the process of designing our policies. As I scroll down, you'll see I can add my AD security groups. Now, these are going to be imported directly from your Active Directory. So I'm seeing a list of security groups that we have in place in the specific domain we're integrating with. Same thing down here with our security roles. These are going to be your Dynamics 365 security roles, including any custom roles that you have created here as a part of your implementation. I'll be able to either add them to an employee or remove them from an employee as we're moving people from uh, around the organization. So that's what is supposed to happen. Now, who should this apply to? If I scroll down at the bottom, I'll see a list of policy people. These are going to be determined based on a query that I've set to say, OK, find me everybody that is a full time employee in the New York office and has the sales rep job to make sure we're granting them the right security access. Now, if I refresh my screen here, there we go. You notice Bruce Chatwin just popped right in there at the bottom. So he now meets the criteria for this particular policy. So we can make absolutely certain that he is synchronizing properly and everything is running the way it should be. So once we've set that up, we're going to take a look now at our Active Directory domain and we're going to make sure that he has synchronized properly. So I'm going to pop us back here into AD. Now I'm just going to refresh this. And there we go. B chat one has been created in here. He is a user and you'll see any data that we've mapped over has popped in here. So I've got his first name, his last name, uh, any description about his job title, his office location, anything that we have decided to pop in here, we'll see. I can track if he's a member of any groups. Here's that domain users and RDP users security groups we uh, sort of set in Dynamics. And you'll notice everything has popped up in here exactly the way that we uh, keyed that into Dynamics 365. So that concludes our demo for today. Uh, I do want to close out with a couple of frequently asked questions. So 
things that we get a lot about Active Directory integration. So first one, is Elevate AD available in Microsoft App Source? The answer is yes. Um, you'll also notice if you go visit App Source and take a look at Elevate HR's offerings um, that we do actually offer a test drive, essentially a free trial for Active Directory integration. If you are so eager to get your hands on it, you can't wait for another demo. Um, so you're welcome to take a look at that. Uh, what Dynamics 365 and Active Directory fields are available to map? As I mentioned, we do provide a series of pre-configured and importable Dynamics fields and Active Directory properties, particularly for non-string properties like addresses and electronic communication, so email and phone records. And then end users can also add any Dynamics or AD string field to the system. Uh, next question, how long does Elevate AD take to implement? So this question tends to vary. It takes anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks, and all of that depends on the structure of your AD domain. If you already have a security matrix defined and you know which roles receive which security groups, et cetera, we can get everything up and running in a day plus testing time. But if there's some domain analysis involved in the implementation, it, of course, can take a bit more time. So that concludes our demo for today. I hope you uh, learned a lot, saw what you needed to see. If you have any follow-up questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at sales at elevate-hr.com or give us a call, country code 1-973-404-7844. Uh, we look forward to following up on Active Directory integration soon. Thanks so much.